part of, uh, what do we call this? Knowing him, past the Knowing him past the scriptures. Now that doesn't mean that we throw out the scriptures. It means that we know the one whom the scriptures are declaring, but we don't just know him based on the scriptures. We know him. We learn him by the spirit. <clears throat> All right. So we were in uh, Luke 21, and uh, we're going to go, we're going to stay in Luke, but we're just going to move over a few verses to the right, uh, a few chapters to the right. Chapter 24. <clears throat> And we're going to look at verse 14. Actually, we're going to read a little bit here so that we get the gist of the story. Starting with verse 14, and we'll read all the way down to 31. Ready, set. And they <clears throat> talked together of the, all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together in reason, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but... Their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that you have one, of another, one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answered, uh, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast thou not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished when they were early at the sepulcher, and when they found not his body, they came saying that they also had seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh into the village whither they went, and he made as though he would go further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and break it, and gave to them, and their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. <clears throat> All right, so you got, you've got these guys, and they were part of Jesus' disciples, and now they're going home, and they're discouraged, and they're sad, and we'd hoped this had been the case, and so, um, uh, so Jesus shows up, and they don't recognize him, okay? They don't recognize him because they don't know the him of him. You can write that down. I'm kidding. <laughs> it won't make sense later if you read it, but that's. Um, and so, so they knew his ministry. They were well familiar with it. They were involved with ministry. They'd heard his teaching, but they didn't know him. And so Jesus says, so what's the problem? What's going on here, guys? And uh, they said, well, they, so they start telling the story. We thought we'd hoped that Jesus was the one, and we'd, we thought he was going to be, you know, everything so-and-so like this and that. And, and, um, uh, and then, you know, he, they start describing what happened at the tomb. The Lord spoke to me probably four days ago. And he said, one of the biggest problems in Christianity is, is that people equate the resurrection with the open tomb. When Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And they, they go here. This is proof that he's alive. But these guys had heard it and they didn't believe. They still doubt it. They heard that the women went there and there was nobody there. An empty tomb doesn't mean anything in the eternal plan of God. You can't find it mentioned anywhere else 
you know, oh, well, you know, like, can you see Paul going, well, there was an open tomb. And so this, that's, that's it. That proves it. You know? well, no, Jesus proves it. Jesus is our resurrection and our life. And yet we keep catching, like we've got little burrs in our clothes that keep catching on things that are not meant to be magnified. We, we major in the minors and minor in the majors. All right, so anyway, so then Jesus just goes, okay, and he just opens the scriptures. And he opens the scriptures, beginning with Moses all the way through the prophets. Remember, they said, you know, uh, he was a prophet. So he takes the scriptures all the way through the prophets, and he begins to expound how they testify of him. But they still don't know him. They still don't know him. But they're just like our other story. They're getting, they're getting scripture. They're getting Jesus from the scripture. And how? I mean, what would be better than hearing Jesus tell us what the scriptures declare? You know. Out of his own mouth. Wow. You know, didn't our heart, hearts burn, they said. Well, God wants you to have more than heartburn. <laughs> he wants Christ revealed in us. And in, in us in such a way that it's not just based on up here, but life and nature. So that if your mind doesn't work anymore, your life still works. And your faith can still work based on that more than I can't call up a scripture so I don't have any faith. I need, I need, you know, I need something now. Give me his verse. Give me something to get me through this. He's going, I, the father's going, I gave you my son. I gave you oneness with him in such a manner that you don't have to prove anything. You don't have to call anything up. You don't have to remember a verse or pull out something. You're one with Jesus. And that's faith, not, not knowledge of scriptures. And that's not just faith in a scripture you've got or faith in what the Bible says that you can't call up at the time because you've stepped from light into darkness. That's an anchor for your soul. That's what it says in Hebrews. It's an anchor for your soul. Okay. So, you know, here's where I get in trouble. Because I'm always dealing with people's motives. So here's what happens is that if we are regularly getting in these situations where we, we go into darkness or a bad situation happens and we're trying to call up something, um, then, you know, we're like the woman at the well. You know, well, I come here daily and I dip and I take back, you know, but then I have to come back. And Jesus says, you know, there is living water out of me. Amen. Aren't you glad I don't wear a little lapel mic? <laughs> living water. And he is that living water. But you see, that comes forth without you trying to do anything. And if it doesn't come forth, it's still there. He's still living water in you. He's still the way, the truth, and the life. He's still the resurrection and the life. He's still your righteousness. He's still all the things that you worry about when you, you know, and y'all have heard Cassie quoted, but I, you know, she says dad quoted this from when she was a little girl, but never doubt in darkness what you've seen in light. But what you see in light has to be him. Because you can see something in the scriptures and it just, Oh, my God, I'll never forget this. Anybody ever thought that? My worst is I'll be laying there in bed, and he would share something like that, and I'll go, I'm not going to turn on the light and wake up dead and write it down, but I know I'll never forget this. And in the morning, go, now, how did I go? <laughs> Jesus, the Holy Spirit's going, boy, you're the rock of Gibraltar, aren't you? <laughs> you are just so, so steady. <laughs> so, so. It's, it's not like having a basket full of stuff. I can throw this at the devil, and I can throw this at, you know, you know my carnal mind, and, you know, at this, at somebody who attacked me, you know, this scripture. You're the basket. 
You're the, you're the container. You're the habitation of God. And so, you know, uh, Jesus starts talking to the woman at the well. And he said, look, you know, you keep coming and going, trying to get, and you, you, take, you take as much as you can, but it's usually only enough to last you a little while, and then it runs out. Okay? We want to search the scriptures. We want to know Jesus through the scriptures, but we want to know Jesus beyond the scriptures once we've known him in the scriptures. This Bible is like a, a well that you have to go to to dip into. Is it not? Yeah. This Jesus, the cross representing Jesus, this is something that you are one with the Son, one in the Son. Not just with, isn't that great news? You're not just one with the Son, you're one in the Son. With the Son is, here's you, and or here's uh, you over here, and here's Jesus, and you know, you're going, I'm with Jesus, I'm with Jesus, yeah, but what if you get separated? What if something, you know, gets you, if, as it were, separated? The truth is, in him, you're never separated. That's who you are. Okay, so okay, so let's use a scriptural terminology here. We say, well, I'm identified in Christ. Can I just say it this one time? I just want to take that saying and the thoughts we have and just dump that in the Ganges River. It's the dirtiest, most filthy river in India. And just let it sink to the bottom of the sludge that is there. I, it's not me trying to identify with Jesus. It's me one with Jesus and me seeing Jesus and seeing that that's who I am and that because that's his life, not that I'm Jesus, but that's his life and that's the one I'm one with and that he, he will never, you know, he'll never leave you or forsake you except the time that you mess up. Right? When you do that, that's it. Jesus is... Sakalavaka, man, he's out of there. He is out of there. No, he's not. You know, it, it, to him, this is settled. It's settled. Okay? But what we're trying to do, and here's our problem, is we're trying to get it settled in us instead of us being settled in him. Amen. And when we see him, you know, okay, but when we're trying to get it settled in us, where are we going? Yes, of course, to the well that we have to go to and draw a little bit more and drink and then go, oh, I'm thirsty again. And I got to come back and, you know, and there's, there's sand down there now. <laughs> I, I can't seem to get a big gulp or something. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so, the reason why, so I'm, the reason why I'm saying trying to identify with Christ, or even I'm identified with Christ. Well, you're probably not if you're saying it like that. You're probably trying to be identified with Christ. You're probably wishing you were identified with Christ. But in reality, it's not I'm identified with Christ. It is there's Christ, and I'm in him. I'm one with him. You say, isn't that identification? Yeah, as long as it's the emphasis is on him. I'm identified with Christ. We'll lose it every time because it's first starting with you. It never started with you. It doesn't start with you, and it doesn't start with me. It started with him. And so when you see him, Beyond just seeing the scripture, beyond just going to a well and leaving and having to come back and then da-da-da-da. You know, have you ever gotten into a situation, let, let's say something like the conference, and you're at the conference, and you're worried at the when the conference starts, you're worried that, that uh, you're not going to have anything <laughs> of spiritual value to say to anybody. And you think, yeah, be honest, that's way, hold on. Anybody ever thought something like that? Okay. I'm, you know, what am I going to say? What if somebody comes up and they share something spiritual and just go, duh? You know, what am I going to do? <laughs> 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 you know. Then they'll all know I'm an idiot. 
you know? Trust me, we already know that and we still love you. <laughs> that's not a problem for us. That's, that's the problem for you because you don't want to be an idiot. Well, let me tell you, it's far beyond being an idiot. There, uh, when we go into a situation like that, we don't have to pull up something spiritual to prove anything. If it doesn't come, it's not your business. That's the Holy Spirit's business. So you just go, well, Christ is my life. I'm here not to share deep things to impress people. I'm here to uh, allow that life to be manifested through me. So I'll just do something for someone. I'll bless them. I'll, you know, and here, here, they've got Jesus with them. Jesus is coming along. He's opening the word. He's doing all of this stuff, but they still don't know who he is. But they sense something and they say, don't go any further. Come be with us. And that's a heart thing where you begin to go after him instead of his teaching. Yes. That's a recognition. Of, even if it's just vague inside of you, you say, you know, hey, no, no don't go on. Abide with us. I love that word. I love the way that it's put there. Abide with us. You know, in the, in the other one, in, uh, verse, chapter, in chapter 21, it says, Jesus went out to the Mount of Olives and abode there by himself. But here, abide with us. So they're sitting down and they're eating and Jesus goes, oh, these guys are really open here. I think I'm going to do something that will really help them recognize me. He takes bread. Remember, this is my body which is broken for you. This is my blood that was for you. And he breaks it and then he blesses it. And then he gives it. You know, and that's a spiritual order. We say, God bless me and period that's good enough <laughs> but he he takes us and we're his body the bread representing his body and he breaks us first well he blesses it and then he breaks it and then he gives he gives us and all of that is a picture of his nature all of that is a picture of the way that he wants to be in us but the way that he is period and the way he will always be self-giving, broken, and they went, we recognize, and then he disappeared because they, if, it, if you see him, if you really see him, because they had the scriptures, and they had Jesus sharing the truth of who he was, but they still didn't recognize him, but they now saw him, and if it really is true, a true revelation of him, which is not a one-time event, but certainly begins one-time event, you see him, then that's your life. That's not something you're going to call up. I saw him. I know him in the breaking of the bread and selfless giving. I know that's his nature. I know that's what he's like. I saw him in that. And then, it, you ever, didn't you ever wonder why he disappeared? You're going, dude, you spent all this time with us, and then you, you know, you just take off? Because it was, it was unnecessary in the externals. It was unnecessary. In darkness, he's still the bread of life in you. He's yes. still the broken bread. Yes. He is still that. You say, but I don't feel it. I must be in sin because I don't feel this. I must be in sin because I can't seem to, to, to remember how this goes. And sp oh, shut up. I'm sorry, but that's just, that's just jabber. It means nothing to God, and it means it's, you, all you're doing is tearing yourself down. He's my life. I saw him in the broken bread. That's who my life is. I don't feel it. I can't recall it right now, but I know that's who I am one with, and yeah. that's what I'm identifying. And when it hits, then God goes, boom, that's it. I don't need to do all this stuff outwardly anymore. You know? Yeah. Okay. Because now he is in everything the I am, Hallelujah. not the I'll do. Not the I'll do. Lord, will you do this for me? You know, and he's going, yeah, of course he will. Because he's broken bread. So he'll do that and do that and do that and do that. But he's waiting for the day 
that you say, I see you, I see you, I see who you are, and I see and I believe, how about this, I see who you are, and I believe, here it is, and I believe that it's your heart that I stand on this, not identif identification that I be one with you, and that I, am, I, I, I have that in all situations. At your worst. Did you know that? At your very worst. He's still your life. At your very worst, he's still the core of who you are. You know why? Because you died at Calvary with Jesus. I am crucified with Christ. And he is, okay, now, if I went for a show of hands, including on the internet and everything else, how many of us believe that we're crucified with Christ? Well, we get, you know, my Lord, we get a lot of hands, you know. But it's not believing that you're crucified with Christ. It's not, see, here, not in that sense. It's, in other words, what I'm trying to say is people say, well, you, you say it's about, you know, you, you talk about death, and it's death, and this and that, and it's death, and it's always death, and da-da-da-da. No, it's not about death. Now you're going to say, oh, oh, it's about life. No, it's about his death. Yes. <laughs> it's his death. You died with him, but it was his death that did it. And any thought of trying to be dead apart from that death is ridiculous ridiculous so where are you going to get that death from well proof in me at every moment no <laughs> you're going to get that by believing that in his death you died notice i didn't say you died in his death it's him first and his death is the thing that accomplished it and it's the only thing that will accomplish it there is no victory outside of his death. So, trying to figure out, now you say, well, what is all this about laying down our lives and stuff like that? Well, I'll give you a quick one, but I've probably only got a minute or less. Is it done? Uh, so, so here in Christ, and, and let me tell you, the Jesus I'm talking about isn't a circle on a chalkboard. Y'all got that? This is not Jesus. This is a picture of Jesus. But this is not Jesus. This is not what I'm believing in. I'm seeing the real one that I'm one with. Does that make sense? Okay. So this one is not that. But this is the cross that he died, the death that he died 2,000 years ago that included you. Okay? That included you. Okay. So... But we talk about down here on this planet, the lamb living in us, right? Well, how does that happen? How do we reconcile the two? And in many cases, people don't. They think that this is one thing and this is another. But this death that you live down here, the one that the lamb lives in you, is the life of this death. I don't, you know, I mean, that's the best way to put it. But it is look here and manifest down here. And not focus on down here. Because that's the focus on manifestation. I mean, can you see an apple tree going, I'm going to have fruit. You know, it's coming, I know it is. In this case, its roots are going down deeper. And with that, Nutrients are coming into that and filling that tree till it manifests. Okay? In this case, there is no manifestation. You can act dead, you can act lamb like, you can do all this stuff. There is no true manifestation until you forget yourself and his death becomes everything to you. And that you say, I acknowledge your death and therefore I believe that I was in you. But again, I'm not believing in you, Jesus, as the circle on the chalkboard. I've seen you. I've seen you. My eyes were open. I saw you in the selfless giving of your body being given and broken. 
and I embrace you. And, I, and, and you see, here's, again, I'm going to finish with this. That's not a concept in your head. That's not a scripture that you call up. That's a seeing that you come to that works. And if you haven't come to it, then stop fooling around and get after it. Say, Lord, I want to know you. Yes, through the scripture, whatever means possible, but I want to know you. And you make it about him as if he was standing right here now. You'd go, I love you, Jesus, and you'd throw your arms around him. Well, in your heart, throw your arms of your heart around him and say, I love you, Jesus. And I just want to see these by the Spirit. And I don't want it to become religion or theology. I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen. Father, we ask you to just continue to help us through these things and to open our eyes and our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um,